Hello and welcome to this Tyranid Tactics video. Uh, so this video came in from special request from a subscriber uh, and that subscriber really wanted me to do a video on spore mines um, and I'm more than happy to do so because spore mines are kind of tricky because people don't think about them in the right terms. Uh, they seem to either um, view them as just uh, like absolute crap that they never take or they sort of consider they expect them to do things they're not capable of and they view them in the wrong terms because there's a very specific sort of way to use spore mines however they fill a specific role and people sort of don't really seem to understand that um, so as always with these videos what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk through sort of stat line and rules and that sort of thing uh, and then I'm going to talk about sort of uh, how to use them and the roles that they fulfil. So, uh, what would you get for spore mines? Well, five points a pop, like per spore mine. I mean, you have to take them in squads of three, uh, minimum. So that's fifteen points for a squad of three, and they fill up a fast attacks, fast attack slot. Um, out of all of the slots uh, in the four sorg for tyranids, fast attack for me is the one that has the least amount of competition. You know, uh, heavy support. There's choices there I have to make. There's you know competition there. Troops. There's choices I have to make there. There's competition. HQ is always filled out. Um, elites. There's loads of different. You know. There's loads of great choices there. You know. Fast attack for me. There's not too much I'm interested in. Um, I'm not really sold on a lot of things in there. So for me, I think taking three minimum groups of spore mines. That's uh, 15 points a pop. So 45 points. You filled out your whole fast attack slot. I think it's a great option, uh, considering how cheap they are. So what do you get for the price you're paying? Well, and you, like I say, minimum squads are free, so 15 points, but you can take them higher than that. So uh, squad of six, 30 points, um, if you wanted to go for that. And here's what you get. Well, in terms of stat line, no weapon or ballistic skill, strength one, T1, wound one, initiative one, attack dash, leadership one, no armor save. So if you don't play Tyranids and you've never heard of Spore Mines, you're probably thinking, that sounds dreadful, why would I ever want to take these things? And, well, that's not how they sort of work. What you get is they're essentially a floating bomb. So they have this rule called Floating Death. Um, they deep strike in, um, and, I mean, I guess you could deploy them, but why would you ever want to do that? You deep strike them. Um, and then in the movement phase, you can move them free. When they run or charge, they go half distance. Um, and then what happens is when they get into close combat at initiative temp, uh, 10, they just detonate. What you do is you place a large blast template over the, you know, um, one of the uh, spore mines that's got into combat. And uh, everything under that blast template is hit. The spore mine cluster is pretty much automatically removed because it's de uh, detonated. But any enemy models or friendly models, uh, if you've, you know, charged a joint combat, they get hit. Um, and it's AP4 and your strength is strength 4. But then, for every additional spore mine, uh, so you, you're in there, you get an extra hit of strength. So if you take three spore mines, you're getting a strength six AP4 large blast template into that uh, squad. So you don't need to worry about them fighting or any or shooting or doing anything like that. All they have to do is just drift into something and then blow up. Um, on top of that, like a good um, a, a serious problem would be uh, they could give away first blood, or if you're playing the scouring because they're fast attack, you think they could give away a victory point, or if you're playing kill points, no. Spore mines are non scoring, non denial uh, units, and they never award victory points when destroyed. Um, so that is great, that's solved that problem. Because, you know, I could see how that would be an issue, because, like, well, why would I want this unit that's going to blow up and give them first blood, or, you know, give them a, a point on uh, the scouring or something? None of that, so that's, that's a plus. So. That's what you get with a sport mine. You get this thing with no armor save and no stats at all that's just going to sort of drift around uh, going three inches and then running or you know charging half distance. And when it gets in, it will detonate. Um, that's what you get. In terms of the detonation, how good is it? Well, mm, kind of mixed. If you take a squad of three, that's 15 points. Uh, and if you get charge a big squad of orcs, that's a strength six. So wounding on twos, AP4 blast template. That will wreck... A mob of boys that will uh, against dark elder that will wreck them um, guard block of guard wreck them um, marines not so much because they still get their uh, they still get their free up save but th I'm gonna talk about more how you want to use them and how not killing isn't necessarily what these are meant to do if you take squads of spore binds and they do nothing they do absolutely nothing they come in and they get shot and they die that is fine 
because effectively how you're using them they should do their job if you want your spawn mines to come in and detonate and kill things you're not really using them right that's not what they're for they're a distraction unit they in 40k what you want to do is you want to give your opponents choices uh, if you're playing an aggressive style like um, i play with my tyranids you want to say do you want to fire at that or do you want to fire at that? Your opponent has to make decisions. Force the, the point onto them. Make them make the decisions. Uh, be in his face. And this is what spore mines do. So your rest of your army is moving up with you, you know, your hormagaunts or termagaunts or hive tyrants or whatever it may be. That's moving up. What you do with spore mines is deep strike them next to a, a shooter unit. So suppose that big squad of fire warriors sitting there waiting to mow down your uh, your space bugs. Deep strike your spore mines in next to them, and then that squad of fire warriors have a choice: do they fire at your uh, main assaulting army, or do they switch around and fire at uh, a 15-point crappy unit that's going to die straight away? And they kill it many times over. But in 40k, uh, the game mechanic is one unit can fire at one target, that's it. So if those fire warriors choose to fire at your spore mines, well done, you've killed 15 points, big deal. That means that the rest of your army can then push up and get in. Equally, another way I like to use spore mines is suppose they do survive that. Deep strike them, you know, they've been deep striked in, they can't assault the turn they've come in, obviously. But um, the rest of your, you know, suppose, suppose they survive and they're, they're there. You've got two units in charging range. Declare an assault, even if they're going to be miles out of range with your spore mines. Overwatch kills the spore mines. Charge in with your warriors. Charge in with your hormagons. Charge in your tire tyrants without Overwatch. You know, suppose there's a, a filthy squad with two flamers in it, and that's going to really hurt your uh, hormagons. Those two flamers, that are, you know, wall of death. Declare an assault with your. Uh, Spore mines, they'll go down, sure, but then you've only lost 15 points and the big squad of Hormagons can get in. So they're useful as a diversion, that's their job. You know, people, like I say, I can't stress this enough, people think if you take Spore mines, they're going to come in and miraculously blow up everything and be really effective. It's not what they're to do, they're there as a distraction, they're there to di divert your opponent's attention. And if he shoots at them, they die, great, they've done their job. If he doesn't shoot at them, he goes, whatever, I'm going to ignore them. And they get in and blow up and kill a few guys. Awesome. For 15 points or however, you know, big your squad is. You've taken out some significant, uh, you know, you've taken out something more than your points, most likely. You know, if they kill one marine, that is. Um, so, in summary, spore mines. Very, very cheap, which is obviously good. I personally, I mean, people can debate this with me. I'm, I'm open to sort of people's opinions, but... I don't think the fast attack is that a competitive slot, so I think that also gives them a boon, you know, cheap and, you know, in a slot where there's not that much competition. Um, non, uh, they can't give your opponent victory points, another plus. Uh, in terms of the blast template, you know, a strength 6 AP4 blast template, that's if you take him in a squad of 3, you know, if you take him in a squad of 5, it'll be what, um, strength 8? Strength 8 Blast Template, you know, it can be pretty devastating um, for that low points. Uh, you know, that can really wreck a squad of lower quality troops like Guardsmen or Orcs or something. But even against Marines, you know, you'll be wounding on two. So you could probably kill a few Marines, especially with that large Blast Template. They'll still get their armour, but, you know, killing a few Marines is probably equal to the, the squad. So that's another plus. However, in terms of how to use them, even if you never kill a single person ever with your uh, spore mines, that's not their job. Also, I would argue that there's such a small investment of points, it doesn't matter. So, you know, if they if they all scatter off the table and die, who cares? It's, you know, it's like you've lost, like, well done, you've lost 40 points. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, that's not their job, though. Their job isn't to come in and deep strike and go around and destroy everything and be this crazy unit that's going to do well. Their job is a distraction. I, in all of my armies, I have some kind of distraction unit or backfield disruptor unit, and spore mines are just perfect for this. So your guys are moving forward, there's a squad of devastators, a squad of uh, looters, a squad of fire warriors, whatever it is, some shooter unit. Deep strike them near to it as you can. That squad then has a choice. It can fire up the spore mines and waste a round of shooting on killing a 15 point crappy unit, 
or they can risk having a nasty template blow up in their face. And that's what Spore Mines are great at. And also you can use them uh, to waste the unit's overwatch. That That's the strength of Spore Mines. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I really can appreciate it. Uh, I really would appreciate it rather. Uh, make sure if you're new to my videos, you hit subscribe. Plenty more of that coming. Um, and also guys, uh, I will be filming the next part of the next battle report for um, the battle for Farah. That will be filmed tonight. So... Um, you can expect the next battle report in a few days and that should be i think episode five uh, a call for help in the battle for farah so make sure you wait for that